Hi, and welcome to Ask Dr. Christian. I'm Christian Flutter, and I'm here to answer some of the questions that you might have. Today's question is, what is plagiocephaly? Well, it's time for an update. Hi there, my name's Christian Flutter and thank you so much for joining me today. Today is an update to a previous video that I've done many years ago. And my goodness, time has gone past. But if you're interested in watching that one there, look, here's that little linky WhatsApp that you can click up in the top corner here and you're welcome to have a bit of watching it. But today we're gonna to be talking about plagiocephaly. So what is plagiocephaly? By simplest definition, plagiocephaly is merely a change to the shape of your infant's skull, or skull in general. You can be a grown-up with plagiocephaly as well, I suppose. But what we're looking at here is more specifically deformational or positional plagiocephaly. Now, this is actually quite a common condition. Back in that previous video, we talked about uh, facts, uh, data, numbers from 2013, and it had gone from 13% up to 46% in 2013 since 2008 or whenever the previous one was. The most recent update that I could find was based on 2017 data, which gives it around a 37 to 38% prevalence in one particular cohort. So we're still looking at around two in every five infants are experiencing a degree of plagiocephaly. And this really raises the question of why? Well, the biggest reasons that we can see are firstly, kids are still laying on their backs. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a beneficial thing to be doing in regards to SIDS, for instance. We don't want to be laying our children on their tummies because it may increase your risk of developing SIDS. So what we need to be doing though, is ensuring that we do spill, still spend some time on our tummy while we're awake. Now there are a couple of reasons for this one and a beautiful paper came out in 2020 by Hewitt et al. And it went through a few of these details. Um, better head shape, surprise, surprise, better neck extensor activity, better academic outcomes in kids who were laying on their tummies more so, though, more so than their back laying counterparts. Now, in Australia, we actually talk about the amount of tummy time that a baby is to receive. And it's actually quite misunderstood. We don't realize that we are expected to get a minimum of 30 minutes of tummy time in the infancy ages. Now you can do this not in one big giant 30 minute heap, but over a several smaller chunks. Because you know what? A lot of babies don't tolerate being on their tummy to start off with. It takes time to get accustomed to this. So giving your baby a little bit of extra tummy time can help prevent or even improve head shape when they've got that degree of plagiocephaly going on. So that's one aspect. What else could it be? Could it potentially be vitamin D? Well, in a funky little study by um, Weir, Weirnink, we we this person in 2016, they did a study looking at two to four months olds, two to four month olds, and they looked at their vitamin D levels. Now, what they also did was they gave one cohort a vitamin D supplement, only 400 IU, which in the grand scheme of things is not really a huge amount of vitamin D. But when they compared the group that received vitamin D compared to the group that did not receive vitamin D, the group that received vitamin D were less likely to develop plagiocephaly than their counterparts. Now that's really interesting because vitamin D, we know vitamin D, it comes from the sun, so we utilize it from the sun anyway. And we can get a great dose from the sun there. But vitamin D plays a very important role in bone strength and matrix development. So if we don't have adequate vitamin D, we can't make good, strong, healthy bone. So could this then play a role in developing plagiocephaly? Well, look, this is one study and there are other studies out there that do question the role of vitamin D. But look, it may just be one particular aspect. A softening of the bones makes it easier for a child to develop plagiocephaly. But then how does it actually develop? Could it be something to do with their position? See, this is part of the name of it, positional plagiocephaly, or deformative plagiocephaly is the other one, but positional plagiocephaly, it infers that that child is stuck in that particular position for an extended period of time. Now, if I'm in this position for a period of time with bones that are relatively soft, it's gonna make it easier for my skull to slightly deform and change shape. 
And you know what? There are a few studies out there that look at kids with plagiocephaly and have a look at see what's happening inside their neck. There was one in 2006 by Sergeif et al, Nisette Sergeif, and they were looking at um, range of motion inside the neck and they found that kids with plagiocephaly over 90% had restrictions in neck range of motion. Then Mergia in 2016 published in the Journal of Craniofacial Surgery, that's a big journal. They looked at a bunch of kids with plagiocephaly and they found Kids with plagiocephaly, over 90% had restrictions in the range of motion in their neck. Then there's other chap looked at plagiocephaly and range of motion. And guess what? We found over 90% of infants had restrictions in range of motion in their neck. Past the ponds in 2021 it went one further and looked at active range of motion. So the previous studies were looking at passive range of motion. An active restriction in range of motion was associated with a higher risk of developing plagiocephaly. So our position plays an important part in this. What uh, does that really surprise you? If you're stuck facing one way, yeah, it's going to lead to change inside our normal head development. Now, is this a bad thing? Previously, we thought it was all just, just cosmetic. Well, guess what? And for this one, I need my cheat sheet. Back in 2017, Martin York, they performed a systematic review. So when we're looking at levels of evidence, we've got case studies, then we've got observational studies, controlled trials, RCTs, all this kind of stuff. But the very tip of that pyramid are systematic reviews. And this systematic review found that infants were at a 30 to 40% risk of developmental delay in the presence of a deformational or positional plagiocephaly. Not a causation, an association. They are there at the same time. But then it went one further. In 2018, Hussein et al. They found that kids who had deformational plagiocephaly were at increased risk of neurodevelopmental neuro delays. In 2019, Colette looked at a whole bunch of kids and they found that at the school age, they had decreased scores on academic performance. Uh, in 2020, Colette again found that infancy had decreased scores in comparison to those kids who did not have plagiocephaly. So there is a lot of evidence mounting that the presence of plagiocephaly at infant ages has a flow on effect as that child gets older. Okay, now it goes even further than just neurodevelopmental stuff. In 2020, Ryle et al. published a wonderful paper, a wonderful yet concerning paper looking at quality of life. We think about just using that helmet and getting that head shape back to normal, but guess what? A helmet does not impact a child's quality of life. If we have a plagiocephaly present, it increases or it worsens the quality of life of that particular individual. Now, this is something that we can address at very early ages. If you have a child who you suspect has a plagiocephaly going on, well, you can have a look at this video up here. I talk about how to have a look at your child and see if it's something that's going on. If you do suspect this one, get your child checked by your healthcare practitioner because there are ways that we can help to improve this one at the infant ages. You improve this at the infant age, you may actually help to divert that particular pathway into this particular pathway. This is something that could help long term the population on the whole. We can help with educational outcomes. We may be able to help with developmental progress. So it's very well worth getting your child assessed if it is something that you're concerned about. And if you have any questions about today's, you're more than welcome to contact me and I'll be able to chat through and help you out with anything else. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I look forward to seeing you again next time.